This rapper's a mathlete, an average athlete. I need to run it like chat me's, but I'm still the same if you ask me. Just a little bit more richer, can't figure out from a picture. I'm old fashioned with a pitch, her curse to me from a sister. Sup guys, YK Paintball here. Now if you follow me on Instagram, which you definitely should, then you'll know that a few weeks ago I was able to attend a clinic held by Joe Barrett of Sacramento DMG. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Joe Barrett. If you have a chance to go to his clinic, it's super awesome. Everything that I talk about in this video I learned from his clinic. It's a really special opportunity if you get a chance to go to one, so definitely do it. And I wanted to thank the man himself because he's First of all, he was super nice at the clinic and taught a lot and taught it really well. And also he took the time to make sure that everything that I say in this video was kind of accurate and up to snuff. So uh, thanks a lot, Joe, for the time and helping out with this video. Now what was really cool about this clinic is that it wasn't a, a clinic where you kind of practice fundamentals and gun skills and snap shooting and all of that, but it was instead a clinic designed to teach us about the, the chess game of paintball, kind of the general strategy and how we want to think about our moves and how we play while we're playing. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to give you guys some of that information that Joe gave us because um, something that Joe mentioned and something that I kind of agree with is that if you're not tapped into a knowledge base, if you don't have access to a coach with a lot of experience, a lot of the information that he gave us is actually pretty hard to come by. So I wanted to remedy that situation and, and put all this information out there, make it a little bit easier to find. That said, if you are a player who's on a team and that team has some experienced coaches that kind of know what's up and know how to play um, and know the general strategy, this video might not be very valuable for you. But if you're someone like me who they just kind of go out on the weekends but want a better idea of how to play and what to be doing and focusing on, or you may be a group of five friends who've come together and formed a team and you want to step your game up, but you don't have access to a coach or that sort of experience and knowledge base, this video is hopefully going to be pretty helpful for you. Now before we get started, I wanted to give a um, clarification, so to speak, on what I'm going to be talking about in this video. I'm not going to be giving you a very specific game plan of once you get to this bunker, you shoot this lane and then you move or something like that, because that's always going to be different depending on the layout. What I'm going to be talking about in this video is a very general framework, um, kind of a starting point or general foundation for you guys to have in your mind and then kind of hang very specific kind of layout stuff onto this general framework. And so, like I said, it's not going to be anything specific, but it's going to be kind of general objectives and ideas for you to keep in your head and direct your emotions when you're on the field. Okay, let's get started. Now, first I'm going to give you guys kind of the two main things, main objectives to keep in your mind when you are kind of executing your paintball strategy. The first is that the, the main idea, so to speak, of what we're doing here is we want to push our advantage and not gain a disadvantage that negates that advantage. And uh, I'll get into that kind of specifically what that means uh, when I actually start talking about the strategy. The second thing that we're trying to do is a bit more specific, is that we are not necessarily trying to uh, get eliminations. Obviously, we're going to get eliminations, that's how we're going to win the game, but the thing, the main objective to keep in mind is not, you know, kill, kill, kill. The thing to keep in mind is that we are going to try and get the opponents, we're going to get their bodies to turn in on themselves. And so what happens is, when the bodies start to turn in on themselves, they're getting really tight and tight and tight and eventually bits of their packs and hoppers and stuff like that are going to stick out and they just won't be able to get any tighter and then they'll get pinched out. And so that's what we're trying to achieve when we are executing our strategy. So just keep those two main things in mind. So the strategy itself, okay? So I want to start off by having you guys imagine yourselves after a breakout. Let's say that everything went perfectly for your team off the breakout. All five of you guys are alive, and you guys have made it wide on both the snake side and the Dorito side. So you guys are in like primo position. What do you do now? Well, first you need to assess the situation. And ideally, one of the sides up for the opponent, opponent, they have either lost a body or failed to make it wide. Okay, let's say that uh, for our purposes, 
on the snake side. The other team uh, has not made it wide. They're still short and kind of stuck in the pocket, the first few bunkers from the, uh, from the box. And so we've got a situation where on the snake side, you are all alive and you've made it wide, but the other team has not made it wide, they're short. And so you have an advantage on this side. What we want to do is we want to push the advantage on this side. So we're going to call this side the attack side, okay? Now the other side, um, you are all alive and you've made it wide, but so has the other team. You're in kind of a stalemate situation. You don't have a disadvantage here, but you don't have an adv a clear advantage that you can push like there's on the snake side or the attack side. So this side we're going to call the defense side. And the objective on this side is to kind of keep, is to not gain a disadvantage. We're trying to not lose on this side, basically. Because if you do, then the advantage on the uh, attack side, the snake side, in this case, is going to be negated. And how is that so? Well, remember what I said about turning in, okay? We're trying to get the bodies to turn in. Because as players move up, the body has to turn in like this to try and kind of deal with what's coming up their side. However, if on the Dorito side in our case, where uh, they've kind of made it wide, if they're able to start moving up, instead of turning in on themselves to deal with paint, they're going to they're gonna be able to kind of swing wide. And they don't actually turn in on themselves. They're just kind of turning their whole formation, but staying kind of square and wide. And so as your attack moves up, if the D side starts to falter and the opponent gains ground, instead of turning in, they just kind of counter swing. And that's not gonna help you win the game. And so that's kind of the general idea of what we're trying to do, is we're trying to push the advantage and move up on the attack side and maintain the stalemate and control the opponents on the defense side. And if we do both of those things, we'll be able to get the uh, opposing team to turn in and we'll win the game. A quick note about sides real quick before I get started. Um, just because you're physically on the attack side or the defensive side doesn't necessarily mean that's where your role or your job is. For example, on the NXL Amsterdam 2019 layout, um, there's a bunker on the snake side, uh, one of the tall towers, that is actually like pivotal and key to controlling the D side. And so the player that gets put in that, in that bunker, they're physically on the snake side, right? But their role is on the D side. And so just, be, and so just remember to keep that in mind when you're, thinking of, when you're playing and you're thinking about this. Where is my role? Not necessarily where is my physical body. Okay, so we've got the attack side and the defense side. The advantage side and the kind of stalemate side. The side we're trying to not lose on. I'm going to talk about our job on the defense side because it's a little bit more general and kind of everything kind of applies to all the players on that side, really. So the defense side. Remember, the object objective here is that we don't, is we want to not lose. And so on this side, right, remember, we are all alive and we've made it wide and the opponent is in an identical situation. They have, they're all alive and they've made it wide. What, the way we want to play to not lose is that we want to stay safe and control. And so we're not going to be kind of gunfighting all day or anything like that. We want to hold our, hold our zones, you know, hold our lanes, and prevent them from moving up. Now, this does not mean you just kind of sit in the back bunkers and just throw paint all day. You know, it might end up being like that, but not necessarily. Because there may, because what your objective is, is to control and stop the other team from advancing forward, right? You're, you're trying to be a wall. And so let's say you're holding a lane and they make it through. It might be that the only way for you to control that player's next bump is for you to bump up yourself and then hold a lane that you can't see from where you're currently sitting. And so in that situation, right, you have to bump forward and move to control and contain the other team. And so that's what I mean is that you're not necessarily going to be just sitting in your bunkers and just shooting paint. You're going to be doing whatever is necessary to control and contain the other side and stop them from moving up and, and negating your advantage on the attack side. 
because if I do that, then I will that will let my friends on the attack side win the game. All right, well, that was the defense side, so let's move on to the attack side. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go through the front, the fill, and the back because they all have some pretty distinct jobs from each other. All right, so let's start with the front players. Now, the first thing that I want to emphasize with the front players is that the objective for you guys is not necessarily to get eliminations. What your job is, is to get the opponents to start turning in by moving up the field, okay? Now, you know, sometimes when you move up the field, there's going to be free, free kills. You know what I mean? Like you crawl up the snake, you pop up and look in, and you just happen to see like a, the entire side of a player and he's not looking at you. Take that kill, obviously, right? But don't put yourself in a situation where you might get shot out to try and get a kill. You know, gunfighting is not the most important thing for you to be doing. Because if you end up getting shot out, all that progress that you've made, all that pressure that you've created by moving up is completely lost and the, uh, and the job for the other team is much easier now. And so yeah, what you wanna be doing as the front player is just moving up the field, okay? Because the more you move up the field, the more attention that they have to start paying that the other team has to start paying to you. So you're going to be talking to your field player, you know, trying to trying to get that coordinating with them, trying to get them to maybe like put in a guy who is keeping you from moving and stuff like that. But your goal is to move up the field and get the opponents to start turning to try and stop your your progression. Now, there's a specific there's a certain situation that I, that a lot of front players will find themselves in where they get really far up and they get in really good position, right? And then all of a sudden three of the enemy team will turn on them and just start hammering them with paint. What some front players will do then is they'll gunfight every person shooting at them, you know, and eventually get shot out, right? Because you can't gunfight three guys and stay safe. And that's really bad for them to get shot out. So if you're a front player and you're in that situation, just stay put. Just just kind of get tight, make sure you're not you can't get shot, and just stay there and stay alive and you know talk to your Phil guy and talk to him about what's going on. Because the fact that there's three guns, that there's a bunch of guns shooting at you, means they're not looking somewhere else. Just by you being there, you are taking up so much of their resources in a sense, you know what I mean? Um, that you are so valuable just being alive in that position. You don't have to get eliminations, you're already creating a lot of value for your team. And so that's kind of the front player's job. Just to recap, the front players, they want to move up so that the opponents start to turn and you can make it easier to pinch them out. And then the third is that when you are in those situations where all the guns are, are on you, just stay put and stay alive. You are doing a great job just by having them pay attention to you like that. So that was the job of the front guys. Let's move on to the fill position. And so the fill position has a few jobs. And the first one is that they want to kind of maintain this advantageous game state. You know what I mean? The people on the other team, they're going to be actively trying to kind of make up for that disadvantage. So they're probably going to try and um, make it out of the pocket, make it wide, or they're going to try and fill that player who was uh, shot off of the break. What the mid, what the field player wants to be doing is they want to be trying to stop that from happening. You know, they want to um, maintain that advantage and protect their front guy. You know, so they're going to be maybe holding a lane to prevent the fill. They might be um, controlling a player to stop them from making it out wide, and they're going to be trying to um, basically use their gun to maintain this advantageous game state for the front player to do their to do their work, you know, make their job a little easier. The other thing that they're going to be doing is that they're going to be coordinating with the, with the front player to make it up the field, you know. There's going to be times where the front player isn't going to be able to move because uh, some player is holding a lane. You know, it's going to be partly your job to make sure that, to try and put that guy in and otherwise help your front player to move up. Now, it may be the situation that your front player is held up by a guy that you really don't have a shot on, you know. Say that the home is stopping your front player from moving up, but you don't really have a shot on the home and your front guy's like, hey, I need some help, I need some help. Um, 
what you can do in this case maybe is let's say you're in the uh, the snake corner and there's a play there's an opponent in there in the snake corner as well and and you don't have a shot on the home um, what you can do is you can hold the tape so that's one less kind of area that your front player has to worry about and then the front player can wrap or shoot inside and put the home in and then move up the tape and so there's although you might not be able to help your front player with the exact problem that they're dealing with, there are other ways that you can kind of lighten the load and help the front player do his job of moving up and getting the players to turn in. Now, there's a kind of another specific job that I think the field player should be doing, and that is in the case of when your front player gets in a good spot and then he's suddenly drawn a bunch of guns on him. Now, if you remember, the big value of this situation for the front player, even if he hasn't eliminated anyone, is that he has drawn all these guns on him and created a lot of freedom. Well, who's he created that freedom for? For you, the Phil. And so, because there's so many guns looking at the, at the front player, you have got some freedom to kind of move around. You might be able to play your bunker a little bit looser. You might be able to make some, some bumps here and there. And basically, you want to maximize the freedom that you've been given so graciously by your front player. What also usually happens, right, is that when the guns are on the uh, front player, because in this situation, the front player is probably very far up, the other team, they're kind of, they've turned and they're pretty horizontal to you. They might have little bits of hoppers, pods, and stuff sticking out of their bunker. And because you have this freedom to move around and play a little bit looser, you might be able to kind of clip the hoppers and the pods and stuff like that and make and kind of lighten the pressure on your front player. And so when your front player is in that position, he's drawn all those guns on him, take that freedom to kind of shark around and make some bumps and look for eliminations. Another job, obviously, is to fill positions. And so if your front guy gets eliminated and your team has decided as part of your strategy that it was really crucial for your front guy to be in this bunker, it may fall on you to, you know, put yourself and uh, fill the position that is now empty. And so some of the stuff that I talked about in the front player portion of this video might be helpful and useful for you as a fill player as well. So kind of keep that in mind is that part of your job also is to fill positions, you know, signified by the name. So that's kind of uh, the main points and, and things you want to be thinking about as a fill player is kind of how do I maintain this advantage? You know, how do I stop them from filling positions or um, making it wide? And then also, how am I going to help my front player make his moves up the field? You know, how am I going to coordinate with him to make sure that he can do his job and get up? And if I'm in a situation where my front player has drawn a lot of guns on him, I want to think about how I can maximize this freedom that uh, I've been given by the lack of pressure. And then finally, of course, you need to be able to fill positions should the plan or strategy call for it. Now let's talk about our back players. Our back players are, no pun intended, basic kind of the backbone of our team and our strategy because they have a unique bird's eye view of the situation. Usually they're a bit farther back, and so they're within yelling distance of both sides of the field, whereas someone on the snake side might not be within kind of audible yelling distance of someone on the Dorito side without, you know, really belting it out. And so the back player, they are getting information from both sides of the field, and they have a better idea of the game state, you know? And so what their main job is going to be kind of to help coordinate both sides. You know, let, let the snake side know what's going on with the Dorito side and vice versa. And this is really important because, you know, sometimes there's a bunker on the snake side that is really good at controlling the D side. For example, the 2019 NXL Amsterdam layout, if you remember what I was talking about before with the sides. And we want to make sure that if the snake side identifies that someone is in that bunker, that we let the Dorito side know. And so that's going to um, largely fall on the back player to kind of relay that information between the sides. And so that is uh, going to be very important for making sure that the team as a cohesive unit is working together. Because there's a real danger, right, that the that this snake side or the D side or the attack side or the defense side are going to kind of work just kind of without thinking about each other. The back player is there to make sure that they're working in tandem and coordinated and that their moves are making sense in terms of each other. 
The other thing, of course, that they're doing is that they're going to be holding key lanes, key zones, and stuff like that to prevent any uh, movements or loss of advantages or gaining of disadvantages and stuff like that. You know, they've got they've usually got a lot of paint, so they're usually laying it down and, and really locking down the zone. So that's the second thing that they're going to be doing. That's kind of what they're doing with their gun. So that was the attack side and what the front, the fill, and the back player should be doing. And hopefully that will give you guys a better idea of how to basically win a paintball game. This information is stuff that you want to keep in your head when you're playing so that if there's ever a moment where you're like, I'm not sure what to do, if you think about these sorts of things, it'll help, hopefully help you figure out what your next move is going to be. Next, I want to give you guys some tips and tricks on how to... Uh, execute this game, this game plan a little bit better. The first one, I think, is to have a nice short little call out that just lets the entire, that lets everyone know quickly what sort of situation you're in. Uh, Joe Barrett, I believe, says he, his team likes to use red and blue. And so the way this would work is red means snake side attack, D side defend, and then blue would mean D side attack, snake side defend. Right? So let's say that the breakout happens and then you are a D side player and you notice that you have shot one of their players off the break. You yell blue, blue, you know, you, the black back player hears blue, he yells blue, and everyone on the field instantly knows what their job is. The other piece of advice I'd say is that when you are walking a field, keep this strategy in mind as you're assessing the bunkers and looking at lanes and stuff like that. Like. If you just going onto the field and be like, oh, this bunker has this lane and that one has that lane, that's useful, but it's going to be even more useful when you kind of go out there with an objective and say to yourself, okay, we want to achieve this. This is the strategy we want to achieve. What sorts of bunkers and moves and stuff like that is are going to help us achieve that? And so going out with just with this kind of idea in mind, the, these gen this general strategy in your head, while you walk a field is gonna do wonders. The last tip I'm gonna give is that you should just always keep these objectives in your mind. You know what I mean? The objective of turning in, the objective of moving your body up, whatever these kinds of uh, objectives, ideas, and strategies are, are ap applicable to your role as a player, really keep those in mind because they're gonna be a, a sort of lodestar for, um, for your play. When you're ever unsure of what you need to do, just think about these objectives and focus on them. And usually some sort of solution or, or idea is going to come up that will be advantageous for your team and the game as a whole. So that's everything that I've got for you right now. I know it seems like a lot, but believe, believe it or not, this is just kind of the starting point. Once you get into the field layouts and all of that, there's so much more to build on kind of the stuff that I've said in this video. That said, like, it was a lot of information in here, so if there's anything that you have any questions about, or maybe anything that you want me to go deeper into, you know, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll make a video, maybe I'll just respond to the comment, but I'll try my best to help you guys out. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to subscribe or follow me on Instagram at yk underscore paintball. Thank you.